Hi there, uh, my name is Paul Thorne. Uh, this is uh, the first of uh, one of my surviving isolation podcasts. Um, we're living in challenging times at the moment and I thought maybe I could uh, share some of my hindsight, I guess, really. I should really tell you a bit about myself. I've been HIV positive over 30 years and uh, I've had it since I was 17 years old. I'm, I'm nearly 50 now. So it was back in the dark old days before there was effective treatment to manage the disease. And uh, in the mid 90s, I became pretty sick. I ended up with um, a multi-drug resistant strain of tuberculosis, which I contracted whilst I was a patient in a London hospital. And um, consequently, I spent three months in isolation, something called negative pressure isolation. So uh, I was in a room wasn't allowed to leave the room. Um, the air pressure in the room was slightly lower than outside. That was just to ensure that none of the um, bacteria that I was breathing out kind of float under the door and go elsewhere into the hospital. Well, I wasn't expected to survive. And I learned a lot about myself in that room. Yeah, I, and how to cope. And for a long time, that part of my life has felt like history really something that's happened in the past and now that uh covid19 is has come into our lives and um kind of turned everything upside down it reopened i guess some of the old feelings that i'd managed to compartmentalize a long time ago and uh and i thought wasn't going to be something that i'd have to uh, deal with again but i find myself in a situation like most people having to self-isolate. I live alone, have a little cat, her name's Fang, and uh, she she's great company uh, for me, although she, she kind of knows there's something going on, I think, I think that animals do. So uh, lots of us are having to self-isolate because of COVID-19. Some of us are well, some of us are maybe physically unwell, and uh, if you are, and you're listening to this and I hope you get better soon. Many of us are holed up in our homes and these are, these are uncertain times, you know, it's an un uncertain future for us all. Of course, there's gonna be a, a lot of psychological and emotional strain and um, I guess that's the purpose of these podcasts. I want to try and give you the benefit of my experience in the hope that maybe you won't have to uh, work out and work your way through uh, isolation completely alone. They used to say that um, when you're HIV positive, that you're not alone. And I guess that was very much true in the in the late 80s, early 90s. You know, there were lots of other people about TB. Having TB, tuberculosis, was a, a different experience because of the isolation. And, and I guess it's the same with with COVID-19, but I want to assure you, you know, that you're not alone. I hate that phrase that we're all in it together, but uh, I guess that we are. So I've used my experience um, from the past, uh, and I've written several books, actually. I've written about nine books. The first one's about HIV, about the rights and responsibilities of HIV-infected healthcare workers. I then wrote uh, a book about uh, called Tuberculosis Survival Handbook. And that was the first time that I ever really wrote about isolation. And uh, it appeared also with a diary that I kept um, of my time in the room in the book. And that went into second edition some years later and kind of built a career on the back of that really. So uh, yeah, I still work in the TB arena, shall we call it, um, even now. I've written also about HIV in a very different way to how I thought I ever would. My first book was, was written in a time when there wasn't really kind of treatment and stuff and things are looking pretty bleak. But later on, I wrote a book called HIV Happy, which was really about how to coexist with the virus. And, um, you know, please don't let the HIV or the um, TB thing put you off. As you're probably discovering for yourself, you know, uh, we're human beings and um, disease knows no borders. It doesn't have a passport. It doesn't care. It doesn't discriminate. Maybe you won't like some of what I'm saying, but take what you want and, and, and leave, leave the rest.
One of the later books I wrote was a book called Diary of a Modern Consumptive. And whilst I was in the isolation room, I kept a, a diary. I was also sent a lot of letters by people and I included some of these in the book. And it took me about 24, 25 years to to revisit that and, and because it was such a difficult time. But I'm really glad that I did because it helped me understand the whole isolation experience a lot better. I'm kind of glad that I did write the book retrospectively looking back on it now because I think to have written it at the time would have been just just too much to handle. Things have changed. I'm healthier than I ever have been. And, um, you know, I know what it's like to live in fear. I lived in fear for all of my early 20s. I wasn't expected to survive. And that's my biggest regret, I guess, now that I'm nearly 50. And, you know, I lived, I lived what should have been the best years of my life in, in, in abject fear. Life today is very good. Having been perceived as, as nothing more than a, an infection, than a disease, I know what it's like to be confronted with something like COVID-19, you know, and I guess this is a new experience for everybody else, but, you know, I have I have been there and I don't know if it's kind of like a muscle memory that I'm, I've kind of just fallen back into, um, yeah, dealing with it in the same way as I, I dealt with being HIV positive and, and also TB years ago. So anyway, without, don't want to bang on too much about that, but I'm trying to repurpose the work that I've done in the past so that it's relevant today in the situation that we find ourselves in with, with COVID-19. There isn't a one size fits all solution. You know, not everything I say is going to be relevant to you or, or mean anything, but Maybe it will, you know, I'm just going to put it out there and, and, and see what happens. Usually I would actually write, um, but I figure for the sake of speed and getting it out there that doing it by podcast is, is probably the best way to do it. So this particular podcast this week is about fear, something that, that many of us are, are probably experiencing right now. Okay, let me tell you something. So COVID-19 has turned up out of the blue and it's, it's turned our lives upside down and there's a huge amount of fear around it. There is another disease, TB, which I mentioned before, but did you know it? in 2018 it actually killed 1.5 million people? That's a huge amount of people. And that figure's more or less been there for, for the last decade or so. You know, a lot of people die of what is a curable disease? I think it was Oscar Wilde that said that familiarity breeds contempt and it's very true because when something is very familiar to us we tend just to accept it as the norm really as the level of fear that we have around it seems to be quite measured in a way it's a bit like the difference between I don't know lots of people die in road traffic accidents but some people are terrified of flying Um, there's more chance that you're going to die in a road traffic accident than than on a plane statistically and yet that fear isn't rational, it's not relative to the risk. And this is the thing, it's it's about the newness of the threat, real or imagined. Uh, COVID-19 has come out of the blue. Um, we're beginning to learn a lot more about it. And indeed, you know, we, we the technology that we have now is so much more advanced than it was even 10 years ago that, you know, we, we, we're probably moving on this, this quite quickly in terms of our understanding of it. But it's about getting things into perspective. One of the things about COVID-19 is, is the newness of the threat. The unknown is, 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 is I guess, what, what we're frightened of. And the more we know about something, the less frightened we are of it. But what we do know is that the majority of people who get COVID-19 are, are going to have mild or moderate um, infection and symptoms. Uh, some will actually be asymptomatic as well, you know, which means that they don't have any symptoms. And some people obviously will get very sick and and, and maybe even die. And death in itself is something that uh, many people are frightened of. I I guess this is something that I've already come to terms with. I've nearly died on two occasions. And in that respect, I've I've done the hard work around around that. Um, Death in itself isn't something that I am frightened of. How I die is an issue for me. But uh, I'm actually pretty certain that I'm not going to die statistically um, in terms of the risk 
So for me, it's about keeping things in, in perspective. I've managed to get through HIV in the dark old days of that. I managed to get through a, a rare and multi-drug resistant strain of tuberculosis. I got through that. They said there was a 95% chance that I was going to die. And uh, that was frightening, you know, and actually during that three months that I spent in negative pressure isolation, I wasn't sure if I was ever going to leave that room. And I kind of swung between hope uh, and despair, really. And, and my mood could change very, very quickly. The media is a double-edged sword when it comes to providing information. And whilst it can be very, very good at, at giving us accurate information, it can also give us information that is incorrect and particularly in this world of social media that we live in all sorts of people are publishing all kinds of crazy shit for me i i, I will not live in fear like i did in my my early 20s i'm just not doing it again um i've been through it and it was a waste of time and energy and, and incredibly painful i think one of the worst things about fear is that it's not tangible you can't touch it it's because it's happening in our minds, um, we're kind of stuck with it. And sometimes, it, you know, if, we, if we're in a high state of anxiety or fear, it's a bit like being in a neighbourhood that we shouldn't really be in very late at night on our own. The most challenging thing about fear is when we project into a future that hasn't happened yet. Uh, there's been lots of talk in the last few years about mindfulness, about being in the moment. But... When we're actually in a state of fear, we can't help but project into a future of what may or may not happen. We go into to a, a period of it, what if? And um, it takes us away from where we are right now. And sometimes the only way that you can get through it, certainly from my experience in isolation, was, was one day at a time. Um, you know, just to take each day in isolation in, in one day chunks. I will talk a bit later on in, in, in further podcasts about how you, you can manage your time in isolation. But uh, my big recommendation to you is that you don't sit there thinking about a future that hasn't happened yet and probably won't happen. You know, because I, I, if your head is anything like mine, it's a bit like a kind of crazy computer that tries to work out uh, all of the worst case scenarios. Then I pick the worst one and, and, and kind of obsess about <laughs> obsess about that completely unnecessary so um, the best way of managing that kind of projection into the future that that fear of what might happen is to speak to somebody else about it and even though you're in isolation you know you can always pick up a phone or or uh, have a chat with somebody and I think that in this time of COVID-19 it's really offering us uh, the potential to connect with each other in a completely different way and just to get a bit more honest about how we feel about things and there's no shame no shame in that you know we're we're human beings and uh you know we fuck up and we make mistakes and we're we're fallible um and we're not perfect either um however streamline your facebook or instagram <laughs> uh, photographs are you know life life just isn't like that so you know maybe maybe this is a good thing that will will come out of it so my top tip is that uh, if you're feeling frightened ask yourself are you projecting into a future that hasn't happened yet where are your feet where are your feet right now if your your feet right now are in this very spot you are when you're listening to this that's what's important the moment the future hasn't happened yet and it probably won't pan out the way you think it will anyway so you know <laughs> Uh, I think Robbie Williams said famously in, in one of his songs, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. So my top tip is, if you're frightened, ask yourself, am I projecting into a future that hasn't happened yet? Just take a step back from it and, and, and think, look, really, am I, am I in the moment? Am I in today? Or am I in next week, next month, next year? All that really matters is, is, is today. Anyhow, I hope that you found my thoughts on on fear useful. Uh, if you didn't, you know, like I said, take what you want, leave the rest. Uh, you know, I'm somebody that's been there before and um, I know what this feels like and I know what people are going through. Uh, and I just really wanted to share that with you.
I hope that you found this podcast useful. I'm enjoying making them. If you want to find the other podcasts, there are links available on my website, which is uh, survivingisolation.com. And if you want to find out more about my book, Diary of a Modern Consumptive, it's available as an ebook, an audio book, and also in print. You can find details of that on Amazon. So anyway, until next week, I'll leave it there and I wish you well. <laughs>